Macroeconomics, lesson number one. Economics is a study of how people make choices when resources are scarce. Scarcity is the term for when people's needs exceed that which is actually available. Time is viewed as the most scarce resource. It's hard to talk about economics without talking about Adam Smith. He came up with this idea of the division of labor, which he wrote about in his famous book, The Wealth of Nations. Division of labor is this idea that production goes more smoothly if it is broken down into tasks done by different people. Adam Smith's famous example had to do with constructing a pen. He counted a total of 18 different tasks that would be included in making a pen. This leads us to the term specialization, which is the idea that people should only do what they are good at doing. Problematic? Maybe, but we'll talk about that more later. The important thing to know is that this only works if people make enough money to buy other things. That's how you build an economy. The best example I can think of is when Henry Ford realized he wanted his own workers to be able to buy the cars they were making and selling. Anyway, another famous econ nerd is John Maynard Keynes. He says, economics is a method rather than a doctrine, an apparatus of the mind, a technique of thinking which helps its processor to draw correct conclusions. A fun fact is that he died the year Donald Trump was born. So now to discuss an important difference, micro versus macroeconomics. Microeconomics is about the actions and decisions of individuals. Think homes, employees, and businesses. Macroeconomics studies the economy as a whole. It's concerned with big picture stuff like economic growth, trade flows, and inflation. Stick with me because I still have a whole list of terms to throw at you. Monetary policy includes things like interest rates and bank lending. In the US, it is conducted by the Federal Reserve. Fiscal policy, on the other hand, involves government spending and taxes. In the US, it is conducted by Congress and the executive branch. Now to define theory, and no, it's not what you're thinking. Forget what you learned in Bio 1101. In economics, a theory is a depiction of how two or more variables interact. The purpose of a theory is to simplify complex phenomena. A model is how we test theories. It can be as simple as a standardized graph. One of the most famous models in economics is the circular flow diagram. It splits the market into a goods and service market and a labor market. Picture the economy as a circle with households on one side and firms on the other side. Households pay firms when firms give households goods and services. Likewise, firms pay households in wages when households provide firms with labor. The money or medium of exchange flows continuously between the two. Speaking of economies, there are a few different types around the globe. In reality, there's probably too many to name, because real-world scenarios function on a spectrum and aren't so black and white, but here are a few to know the definitions for. A traditional economy functions on the premise that what a household produces for itself is all that household will consume. This leaves very little room for economic growth. A command economy is when one individual or a group of individuals, like the government, decides what goods and services will be produced. Historically, communist governments have emphasized this type of economy. A market economy involves the decentralization of economic decision making, where production is based simply on supply and demand. A market is more of a concept than a physical thing. It is an invisible force that combines the processes of those buying with those selling. Adam Smith said it best when he labeled this unforeseen force at play as the invisible hand. And that's all I have for chapter one, so I hope this helped.